tonight on Q2 is the fourth time a charm. So we have teachers now in closets teaching. It makes it pretty tough. That and the modulars, and we just would rather have a facility that's more conducive to learning. Park City Schools returning to voters with yet another bond request will break down the new plan. Plus, a historic but little-known battlefield right here in our area is remembered. Five U.S. soldiers died, two Native Americans died here, and this site was set up to memorialize the battle. We'll tell you how one Billings man is now taking it upon himself to restore this historic site and carrying on a tradition. We thought it was a really good idea just so we could support the veterans, um, those who have passed and those who are currently serving. How our Carbon County Veterans Day celebration is now being passed down to younger generations. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Those stories coming up in just a minute. But first tonight, new information is coming to light about Sunday night's escape as we learn more about how two inmates successfully pulled off Yellowstone County's first jailbreak in 18 years. In fact, for one of the suspects, this was not the first time he's tried such an act. Tonight, MTN's Jackie Coffin dug deep into a newly filed court document, painting a picture of the escape. It all started here at the Yellowstone County Detention Center, where two men managed to break out a window in their jail cell. For one of the men involved, it was the fourth time he's attempted to escape from this facility. That it, you know, when you're going through thousands of people a year in a facility like that, it's, it's, it's bound to happen. I that's Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder reacting Monday to news of the escape. Jailbreaks are rare. This was the first here in 18 years. But that didn't stop inmate Cody Flesh from trying repeatedly to break out of the facility. He had been caught trying to escape four other times before Sunday's successful attempt. Probably an oversight on our part. We, we've uh, taken steps to resolve the the issue that we had to deal with down there and um. charging documents filed Tuesday state 31 year old flesh and 23 year old Quincy Fister escaped through a window in their jail cell before running across the property and climbing a fence documents state the window frame in the cell had been removed and there was no glass debris and damaged brick was scattered on the floor and bed around the window they have a lot of time to think about that some of them and that's exactly what they're thinking about and that's why it's so important that we um, you know, stay on top of our game as well. So. According to court documents, in October 2021, Flesh tried to break out the window glass and framing in his cell using pieces of metal that resembled a shower drain. Detention officers also found homemade lockpicks in his cell and a hand-drawn map of the facility. And just six months earlier, Flesh had allegedly planned a more elaborate escape working with friends on the outside. His plan was to cut himself badly enough to be taken to a hospital and have friends ambush the ambulance and route to break him out. Two weeks later, Flesh was charged with yet another count of felony attempted escape for running out of a courtroom during a hearing. He was immediately caught and now he's back behind bars yet again. Bail is currently set at one and a half million dollars for Cody Flesh and two million dollars for Quincy Fister. Both men are scheduled to appear in court Wednesday morning. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. On the education front, after three failed votes, the Park City School District is once again returning to voters with a bond request, but this time substantial changes have been made in hopes of passing it. Our Haley Monaco has details on the new ask and why everyone is not exactly pleased to see it back on the ballot. The Park City School District is hoping four times a charm as they try and convince taxpayers a new school is needed. Three previous bond proposals have been shot down and now debate is already swirling about a new smaller proposal from the district. Space is hard to find here at the Park City School. Some classes are now held in closets, others in these three modular buildings. When you cram them into these smaller size rooms or into the modulars, 
there are issues that are going to develop. The Park City School District has been asking voters for a new school for more than 20 years. One issue with these modular buildings, according to the district, is safety. The modular for 7th and 8th grade classes is across the street from the school and does not have any water. So they're back and forth in between buildings. That's just one reason Superintendent Dan Grabowska says this new bond must pass. Our, our district needs these things. We need the school. We need the space. The new proposed bond is for $14.4 million, a roughly 20% decrease from the $16.7 million bond that failed in May. Many things were cut from the previous proposal. The gym went from 900 seats down to closer to 600, cut out some of the locker rooms, um, so we won't be able to run tournaments in there. Park City is set to transition to a Class B school next year. A proposed music room, kitchen, and egg program have also been modified. But even so, some say now is not the time for the district to be asking for a new school. State Senator David Howard sent this letter to voters asking Park City residents to vote no, saying, quote, the school board needs to rethink this and do the minimum needed to keep our schools in good shape over the next few years until inflation and taxes are under control. Doing the minimum for the kids is just not something that's in my blood. I, I don't understand that. If the bond passes, it will cost the owners of a $200,000 home $463 a year for the next 30 years. We still know it's expensive. We understand that. But those in support say it's worth it, a long-term solution to help kids in this community. Everyone needs to be on the same page because the people writing those pages now are kids. In Park City, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Exactly 145 years ago, a historic battle took place right where I'm standing. It's come to be known as the Canyon Creek Battlefield, but you might not have even known it exists. One Billings resident is not only trying to change that, but wishes to preserve the memorial, hoping it will be enjoyed by folks for years to come. Dave Wanzenreed had passed by the Canyon Creek Battlefield Memorial west of Billings many times before. It wasn't until the pandemic that he decided to actually stop by the historic site, and he was shocked by what he found. This entire area here was covered with garbage, household waste, ranches, furniture, you name it, and it becomes sort of a dump. That's when Wanzen Reed went to work, hauling away eight pickup trucks worth of trash. But he didn't stop there. He started fundraising to make improvements to the memorial, like fixing the fence line. We're going to pave the parking lot and then we're going to put a new roof on this building. Now he's the president of Friends of Canyon Creek, the organization that owns the memorial, a memorial meant to preserve the story of what happened on these hallowed grounds 145 years ago. Frankly, it's a story about both the U.S. military and the, and the Native Americans believing in what they were doing and being willing to put up their lives for those beliefs. On September 13, 1877, 750 men, women, and children from the Nez Perce tribe encountered U.S. Army soldiers here from the 7th and 1st Calvaries. A battle ensued. Chief Joseph was on his way to Canada to settle there because he had been forced off his tribal lands in eastern Oregon onto a reservation. and. They didn't want that. Chief Joseph would surrender just three weeks later, but five U.S. soldiers and two Nez Perce tribe members lost their lives during the battle at Canyon Creek. It's a historic moment and one Dave Wanzenreed wants to preserve. When I'm gone, this site will be maintained every week by Bright and Beautiful, so that won't ever happen again. And that, for me, that it's sustainable and it's clean now is one thing, but having it that way 25, 50 years from now is more important than ever. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. It started as a Veterans Day tradition and it continues to grow. Thousands of dog tags line Highway 212 between Rockvale and Red Lodge commemorating local veterans. And as David Jay reports, it's now spreading to a new highway thanks to students in Bridger and Belfry, kids who hope to make those who began the mission proud. Citizens in Carbon County put out dog tags and crosses on the highway to honor veterans on Veterans Day and Memorial Day. And now students want to start that same tradition here in Belfry. What started as a great idea continues to grow. In 2015, Robert started honoring veterans along Highway 212 by placing dog tags along the road for living veterans and crosses for those who have passed away. The idea then spread from one community to the next along Highway 212. 
And now to a whole new road as the Belfry FFA will soon pay tribute to veterans on the west side of Highway 72. We should honor our veterans just to show like the like the support for the families because I know that a lot of them are going through hard times and they have gone through hard times because of losses and things. Belfry will be the fifth in the county to show appreciation for military service members with these roadside displays. The next step, asking the Montana Highway Commission to name the highways through Roberts, Joliet, Fromberg, Belfry and Red Lodge, the Carbon County Veterans Memorial Loop. It'll be a huge drive and there'll be crosses and dog tags for the whole Carbon County when we're done. Sandra Campbell helps the Belfry FFA and says the project is part of the students' community service initiatives. It's just an opportunity for them to, to become uh, better citizens. This is a big way that we can impact them and start to create that culture amongst our youth of service and community and giving back. The Roberts Activities Committee presented the FFA students at Belfry High School with $500 on Tuesday to get the project started. It's a pretty cool deal to uh, come home and see the whole county behind um, all the men and women that have uh, served this country. To see FFA chapters, these young kids uh, trying to take on this project, it's it's wonderful. The plan is to have the Belfry High School shop class make the dog tags and crosses and have them ready for Veterans Day. In Belfry, David J, MTN News.